Do you ever find yourself browsing the internet and seeing something that you'd like to read later? You can save those things to a service like Pocket or Instapaper or even the reading list built into your iOS or macOS. But if you're an OmniFocus user, it can be really nice to keep track of things that you want to read in your OmniFocus. So today I will show you how to do just that. Real quick before we start, my name is Peter Akis. I teach a course on OmniFocus called How to Set Up and Use OmniFocus 3 to Get Stuff Done. It's a course that a lot of people love and you can get a free preview. So just go to the link in the description below the video and check out the free previews of that course. But all right, for now, let's go and set up a reading list in OmniFocus. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to set up a project. So I'm over here under my projects and I've got a folder with demonstration projects. I'm going to click at the bottom here and click a new single action list. And I'm going to call this single action list my reading list. Okay, this single action list is going to contain tasks with links to the things that we want to read. So we have to get those things that we want to read into OmniFocus. Let's do that first. Let's go over to Firefox, which is my browser of choice. And here I've got an article that I might want to read later. So I want to send this to OmniFocus. Now I'm going to click the uh, dot, the page actions dot over here and click share and then say send to OmniFocus. Now here's one downside of using OmniFocus for this is if I'm sharing from Firefox, for example, I'm not getting the page title in here. And I also cannot choose which project to save it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type Steve Pavlina article on fully disengaged rest breaks, which is the article that I want to share. I'm going to click post. Now, if I go back to my OmniFocus, that will sit over in my inbox. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the project here. I'm going to do assign it to the reading list project. So then if I go to my reading list project, it will now sit in here. So I can do this um, many times whenever I'm reading something and then every now and then go into my OmniFocus and see all the things that I want to read later. Let me show you how sharing works in Safari. In Safari, what you can do is, for example, if I have an article here that I'd like to read, I can right click it and I could share it to OmniFocus. But if I do share to OmniFocus, yes, it'll fill in the title and some text, but it won't have a link, which is quite frustrating. What I can do is right click and go services and then say OmniFocus 3 send to inbox. And actually, it allows you to send it not just to the inbox, but also to a reading list. And it includes the link. So I think this is easier. So for those of you using Safari, it's a little bit easier than if you're using Firefox or, or maybe Chrome. So I'm going to type the reading list, my demonstration project reading list. OK, and we hit save. And now if I go back to OmniFocus, this other article sits in here as well. Of course, you can also manually create a new task and um, give it a title and a link for things that you want to read later. And your reading list could also include things that are not articles from the internet, right? It could be like a physical book or something. Um, so that's how you add to it. Now, if you're using a service like Pocket or Instapaper, you'll find that the sharing is a little bit easier. For example, if I want to add this article to my Pocket to read later, all I can do is really click this Pocket button and now it's saved. Then if I go to my Pocket and I refresh it, it sits over here. So it's definitely faster to use something like Pocket. But there are benefits to using OmniFocus for your reading list, which we'll get into in a second. So let's go back to OmniFocus. Now that we've got a reading list project, I also like to have a reading list perspective because um, it's just nice to only see the things that I want to read. So I'm going to go over to perspectives and click show perspectives. Now I've got my own reading list project or perspective set up, but I want to show you how to create one from scratch. So I'll create another one. Just click plus at the bottom here, and then I'll call this my reading list. I'm going to give it a nice icon. And by the way, I think it's Josh Hughes who made these icon sets. I think they're really neat. Um, I'll put the link to his icon set in the description below. So give it a nice icon, the reading list name. And now we just got to set some rules. So let's set the availability to available. The distinction between available and remaining is a subtle one that I don't want to go into in this video. Just keep it unavailable, although it shouldn't matter too much in this case. Click plus here to add another filter rule. And just go all the way to the bottom and just click contained within project or folder. And then choose the reading list project, the reading list single action list that you've got set up. 
And now if you do that, you can click the star over here to make this perspective show up in your sidebar. And if I click the reading list perspective, you'll see that all you're seeing is the items in your reading list. And you can make this show up on iOS and iPadOS as well, by the way, this perspective. Now, I like to group and sort by entire projects rather than by individual actions. And I'll tell you why. Perhaps you'd like to have separate reading lists for maybe your, your personal things and for your work things that you want to read. So we can actually go back to our reading list, single action list, and rename it to a personal, personal reading list. And in the same way, we can then create another single action list, which is the uh, work reading list. So let's say that now there's an, a work article that I would like to, to read. So perhaps um, I'm checking out this new software called Airtable. So Airtable getting started guide. Okay. Here's a walkthrough for, let, let's just do the getting started with Airtable thing. This is something that I'd like to read for my business, really, um, not for my personal uh, enjoyment. Well, it's also personal enjoyment, but let's say, huh? I can share this to OmniFocus. I'm going to say uh, share to OmniFocus. Getting started with Airtable. Oops. Go to the OmniFocus inbox, and then I assign the um, work reading list, single action list. And so now if I go to the work reading list, this getting started with Airtable article is in here with the link but our perspective only shows the personal reading list. So I can go back to perspectives, show perspectives, go to the reading list perspective. And this is why I said I like to sort things by entire projects because now what we can do is we can actually say, hey, I want to grab all the items both in the personal reading list, single action list, and in the other one. So, so the item has to be in one of these two single action lists. And the way we're going to do that is this way. We're going to option click to add a new rule group. So I'm pressing the option key on my um, keyboard and then I click plus. And now we have a new rule group. Okay. And it says any of the following are true. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one. And I'm going to say contained within project or folder. For this one also contained within project or folder. And here I'm going to choose the personal reading list. And here I'm going to choose the work reading list. And now it says um, the availability of the tasks tasks that we want to show in this perspective has to be available. And it has to be either in the personal reading list or in the work reading list. Okay, so now if I X out of here and I'm looking at my reading list perspective, I'll see that there's a nice division between my personal reading list and my work reading list. So that's the basics of how you set up a reading list in OmniFocus. Now, one of the reasons that you might want to have your reading list in OmniFocus instead of in an app like Pocket, because like I said, it's actually really easy to share things, for example, to Pocket, right? That was super easy and fast. And I showed you that sharing to OmniFocus is a little bit slower, right? One of the reasons that you might want to use OmniFocus is because I find, and you'll probably also find, that there's a lot more things that you theoretically want to read than that you actually end up reading or have even have time or energy to read. But of course, in OmniFocus, these single action lists can be reviewed. So I will just drag myself over to the left here. These are single action lists. So they're a type of project in OmniFocus and projects can be reviewed. So you can say, for example, that you want to review this project every one week, right? And for the work reading list, the same thing, review every week. So it can be really, really handy because as you're doing your weekly review in OmniFocus, you will now also see a list of all of the things that you still want to read. And that can be a good opportunity to delete a lot of the items that actually you decided you no longer want to read and just call that list a little bit. Just keep that list short and, and you know concise and keep only things that you really, really are excited about reading on that list. I, I find that when I've used Pocket before, I've done this periodically anyway, gone in there and delete all the things that have sat in there for a couple months or, you know, that at one point I was interested in reading, but then I would never really wanted to do it. But um, this way, by having your reading list in OmniFocus, not only is it nice to have some, uh, to have sort of all of the things you want to do sitting in your OmniFocus, it also automatically force, not forces you, but it nudges you to review your reading list and just keep it um, short. Because in the end, um, you really only want to read things that you're excited about reading.
Hey, so that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about OmniFocus. And do check out the free preview of my course on OmniFocus. The link is in the description below. You can also pick up a free OmniFocus weekly review cheat sheet. That's at a separate link in the video description. So if you'd like to learn how to do a more comprehensive weekly review in OmniFocus, just pick up my free cheat sheet. All right, have a nice day.